How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today it is a 95 degree Fahrenheit day but it is a perfect day to test something out and that is if we cool one of these panels what is the percentage increase in power that we can create just by cooling that panel off? Now this idea came from Brent who commented on one of my videos that he could increase his power output by 10% just by putting the sprinkler on his panels. So I'm gonna make up a little rig and put water on one of these panels, then test them side by side and compare our results to see what kind of increase in power output can we actually get. But first, let me show you this baseline test I've been running that's gonna give us confidence that each of these power analyzers that's measuring the overall energy that we're generating is a good baseline. We should see something very similar here. They're at the same angles. They're in the same conditions. They ran for exactly the same amount of time. So let's check that data. Then we'll talk about temperature coefficient, and then we'll start our test with cooling down one of those panels and see what we get. So I've been running this baseline test for about an hour now in full sunlight. We have two 360 watt panels. Each panel is basically its own independent system because it's plugged into an EcoFlow Delta Pro, one for each side, and then I have two power analyzers here, and really those power analyzers, what I'd wanna see is that they both equal each other. 370 watt hours, and let's check this one. 370 watt hours, wow, that is extremely impressive that we basically have zero error between these two, and this gives us confidence now that we can test between these panels and really just test the impact of cooling down one of those panels. So really what we're testing is can we overcome what is called temperature coefficient by cooling down the panel with some spray on top of the panel. Each panel will have its own specification. 0.3% power loss per degree Celsius that you are over STC or standard test conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and obviously you need to do a conversion here. So for this panel, it would be 0.17% power loss per degrees Fahrenheit. That is not air temperature, that's actually the surface temperature of your panel. So let's check and see what we're getting on our panels right now. And probably as you're expecting, that's gonna be well above my 95 degree Fahrenheit air temperature, which we have right now. So about 135, yeah, it looks like both of these Wow, somewhere around 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So the two plots I have right here is just a degrees Fahrenheit plot. And what that says is on the x-axis, as we increase the temperature above standard test conditions, then you have to follow the line and then you're gonna get how much power loss you're looking at. I just marked the 10% power loss in degrees Fahrenheit. That'd be a temperature of 59 degrees Fahrenheit above STC degrees Celsius, that'd be 33 degrees Celsius. By chance, if we look at our 135, and then we take 77 off of that, subtract that out, so we are right at, we're basically right at, these are conditions where the temperature, the surface temperature, and the temperature coefficient would say, hey, we're gonna get 10% power loss just from the temperature of that panel. So that's the whole premise of this test can we bring this down or when we bring this down putting water on top of the panels are there going to be other things that are actually going to mitigate the benefits we get by overcoming temperature coefficient so let's go ahead and put together a little rig and start our test so what i'm going to use for this setup is just schedule 40 pvc what I want to do is get a 39 inch wide sprayer bar so I can completely spray the width of one panel during this test. Overall, it doesn't have to stand up to the test of time, it's just gonna stand up to the hour or so of the actual test. So I'll go ahead and prime and glue each one of these connections and then you'll see two of those T's in the middle. I'm constructing the overall 39 inch sprayer bar and that's why there's caps on each end. Those T's, one of the T's is actually going to be the feeder, so the garden hose is gonna connect up to that. And then the other T is just so I can actually stabilize it within this jaw horse. I'll actually use the jaw horse, which is actually a pretty handy little tool to hold, not only for the construction of this sprayer bar, but also to hold it during the test. Level things out a little bit just so we get it level. If the sprayer bar was not level during the test, then you'd have a bunch of water going out one side and probably struggle to get it on the other side. 
And then once I have the legs constructed, then I'll go ahead and one inch spacing, I'll drill one eighth of an inch holes through and that will be the actual sprayer portion of this bar. So this is what the actual rig looks like. We'll just pinch it in the jaw horse there. That will hold the overall rig. Then we have the side that has an on off valve from the hose. I have a little flow meter, so I'll be able to give you an idea on the gallons per minute into our adapter. Then that will flow up into the crossbar. And then the crossbar itself has holes every one inch. So that's gonna give us our coverage along the 39 inches of the panel itself. So let's test it out. So I'm not gonna crank the water completely on, I just want a nice distribution and a nice slow flow across the 39 inches. Overall, that looks really good and I think it's gonna work out well. So I'll position that bar on one of the panels and then make sure it's pretty close so we're not getting a bunch of overspray and then I want to make sure the complete coverage across the entire panel. So it's a little unlevel. All I'm going to do there is prop up one side just with a rock. And I want to see those streams covering all the way down from left to right, top and bottom. And now it looks pretty good. So now we'll start our test and see what the overall power gain is with cooling the panel down. All right, the sun is still blazing. It's about 93 degrees Fahrenheit out. We're about halfway through the test. This honestly would be a perfect day to actually have solar on my home and fully leveraging all this sunlight, which is coming from my own home. I do have an 11 kilowatt system that will be installed here in the coming months. Now, if you don't have solar, but you're considering it, a great place to start is just what size of system do you need to offset your monthly energy costs? And what is an estimate of that system cost? Now you see a link in the description. This is where I started off to get an idea on my own home, put in a little information on your utility bill in your home and the setup, and then they can give you an idea on the overall system size and the associated cost. Which is a great place to start off so you can start planning. And then if it's something you want to go forth with, you can start looking at those installers from an actual quote perspective. And just importantly, looking at the installers, how long have they been in business? What is their reputation? So you're confident that they'll be able to be with you through the whole warranty period of your system. But let's jump back to our our test and see what is the difference in the actual surface temperatures now and then finish things up comparing the watt hours generated from each of the sides to see what is that overall power gain. So checking that hot side again we're maintaining a 135 degrees Fahrenheit and then the cool down side all the way down to 75 so 75 on cool down 135 on the warm side. Now, after an hour, over an hour actually of runtime, let's compare. So this one's gonna be the cool down panel. The lower left-hand corner will cycle through and we're looking for watt hours. So once that cycles through, we'll see that this one generated 412 watt hours. Now let's compare that to the hot side and we should see less. So 412 on the cooled side and 392 on the hot side. So 20 watt hours was our gain, which is not bad, that's 5%. So we clawed back 5% of the loss that we saw at 135 degrees Fahrenheit, that surface temperature, we're gonna lose 10% from our temperature coefficient on these Helium 360 panels. Now from a water perspective, we used about 130 gallons over the duration, and it works out to about 1.6 gallons per minute. So is this actually practical to set this up? I know I personally wouldn't be doing it, but let me know if you have a system that actually is set up and working, or if you've seen it. Probably a system with internal cooling passages or misting or something that's a little bit more efficient than this. But although the 5% gain is great, I'm not really considering it for any of my permanently installed systems. Now, if you guys are sizing out that system for your own home, don't forget, if you're switching from a normal internal combustion car to an EV, you need to consider that. That's gonna be a huge new power draw on your system that you would need to account for your panels so you can offset that additional usage. That is the scenario I'm going with. I don't have an EV right now, but I do have a Cybertruck showing up. So that's gonna be a big draw and I need to size out my system to also offset that even though my current power bill doesn't show it. So check out this video right here. I'll walk you through an example where I use a spreadsheet and calculate that for a Model Y and a Cybertruck, but then we have multiple other models that you can use as well. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.